What's up guys? Welcome back. Yes, I just woke up from a nap, but that does not matter. We're getting started on the Evora today. Let's jump into it. <sighs> Excuse me, still waking up. You guys remember my Lotus Evora? AKA the most street parked Lotus Evora in the world. The most street parked budget supercar in the world. You guys get the picture. So. This guy has been outside for a long time. We've got like surface mold coming on on the outside here. It's kind of weird stuff. Um, obviously broken up right here. That's what we're working on fixing. Uh, during the wreck, we got this headlight got uh, moved out of out of where it goes as well. So what happened was is this was parked on the street and somebody somebody backed into it. That's what we're here to repair. So to do that, we need to get it out to the shop. It's in front of my house right now, um, and the battery is dead. Chelsea helped me get the trunk open late last night. This is a uh, Really, really hard thing to do. Impossible with one person when your battery is dead. There's a there's like a, a backup like hand pull mechanism under the back seat. You yank on that and it has a cable driven thing over here that doesn't really ever work very good, but we got it open. So the battery's dead. Um, we're rather than taking the battery out and charging it, um, since the charger's at the shop, I'm just gonna jumpstart the car. Uh, the alternator will do the charging on the way to the shop. Once we get there, we'll pull it out and see if the battery is salvageable. A lot of times when you have a battery that sits in a dead car for a really long time, like this one, uh, it ain't coming back to life. But we'll figure that out when we get there. So I'm gonna grab the FJ, bring it over, and we'll see if we can get it started. Oh, how I miss this dashboard. 7,900 miles on this car, and 2,000 of that is us going to California and back the last time. It's a real dead battery. Give this one more try. Wow, stubborn. I tried once again to get it started and it just will not start. Even with the jumper pack on it and the car powering it, I'm thinking this battery's just so dead. It's just, I don't know what they do magically discharging all the power, but they don't store any power for when you go to start it. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the battery and we'll have to take it down to the store. Time for a quick rundown of the store. We're either gonna get this battery warrantied or I'll just buy a new one. I'll let you guys know how it goes. All right, very cool. So the other battery was just super, super dead. That's just what happens to batteries when you leave them sitting for a really long time at 0%. They normally just die and never come back to life. Not shocking. More surprising to me is they just, they warrantied it out and gave me a new one. So you still have to pay a, a fraction of what the new one cost, but the new one was like 134 bucks and I think I paid 45 bucks. So I got a new battery. For 45 bucks, let's get back to the car and we'll get it started up. All right, new batteries in. I got high hopes this time. Let's give it a shot. There we go. I'm holding the throttle up high. I think it has a dirty MAF sensor, so sometimes when it does a cold start, it'll kind of sputter out, so I'm just giving it some RPMs right off the bat. All right, this feels good, except for the headlight that's falling down on my head. But uh, there's, a, there's a decent amount of traffic, so it's gonna be about a 40 minute drive back to the shop. So I will uh, put it through its paces, as well as its traffic, and uh, let's get back to the shop and see how it does. All right, we made it. The car performed okay. A couple of funky smells, nothing too major, and we will jump into all of that in a little bit. But first, we gotta hunt for that Corvette key. The FJ was parked right here where the Z is now, and normally what happens is I go to grab my keys like this, I pull them out by the key tag, this wonderful key tag that I'm sorry we don't have any more in stock of, and then the Corvette key comes flying out along with it. Like right now I got the Evora keys like sitting singular in my pocket, it comes flying out with it. I've brought a key tag to put on it. When I find it, we just gotta find it. So I'm assuming it's gonna be on the ground somewhere and I'm betting a common place is gonna be next to the shop's front door. Cause I'll probably whip my keys out real quick somewhere right around here to unlock the door for the shop. We have to find this key, people. I have to find this key. Hey, is this NASA? Yeah, can I borrow a magnet the size of my backyard? How big is it? Oh, like you don't have cameras? At the risk of totally screwing up today's episode, I have to drive back down to Harbor Freight and check that parking lot. 
I just, I only went two places. I only went to that parking lot and right here and I'm not seeing it anywhere right here. So I'm gonna head over there and uh, hope somebody's seen it. I just gotta, the stakes are too big to skip this. Well, bummer. No luck here either. The key is actually legitimately lost. All right, the hunt for the key is over until it gets nice and dark outside. And once it does, I'm gonna grab that really powerful light and shine it on the ground and see if anything shines back. But for now, let's talk about the Evora. Uh, I wanna just jump over. It's been 1.5 years since we finished this car and I just wanna talk about kind of what has gone wrong with it in that time, what's always been wrong with it and what we really are, what we're gonna be fixing over the next uh, couple days. We got about five days or something to fix it. So starting off, it got hit, some guy backed into it. Uh, um, he uh, he backed up, smashed the bumper in half, left a note. His insurance company paid me five grand uh, to replace my bumper. I decided to keep that money. That was a long, long time ago. I've long gone and spent that money. And uh, I'm gonna be, I've decided that I'll just repair this myself. So that was an insurance claim from a long, long time ago. When he hit me also, um, the headlight mounting brackets got damaged so the headlight's no longer in its spot and it's a little, it's a little marred up. Both of them are a little, a little worse for the wear um, and are gonna need to be fixed. So work on the front bumper needs to be done. Lots of fiberglass work. The second time it got hit, it got hit right here and there's no actual glass strand in there. It's just the gel stuff and it popped through there and, and busted a lot of that stuff off. So that's gonna be a little bit harder to fix. Um, really like I'm gonna need to do some serious watching on YouTube about repairing a fiberglass crack like that. I mean, I've watched it before, but gonna need to, gonna need a refresher course. Uh, I'm not really sure if I should. Um, it's cracked all the way through, so it can actually like come apart more or less. So I'm not really sure if I should build some sort of a backing thing and actually drill through this and then later on take that off or not. I'm not sure about all those spider cracks either. So that'll be really interesting. It's gonna be a lot of work. A Couple of the niceties that Chelsea and I would like is the air conditioning is not charged, but I do believe there's an AC condenser in there. So nothing should be stopping us from running AC. So I'll need to charge the system. The alignment is off. It's a, it's a little bit too much one way. One of these wheels is off like this or this. Uh, I think a simple string alignment will work wonders with this car. Uh, I'm not really sure. I think it's this wheel. This wheel is too far in. Uh, so we'll probably do a string alignment on that and, and fix that up. Uh, we'll come into, coming over to our mirrors. The hardware that we used on the mirrors and the paint did not last very well. Um, so I'm gonna eventually go back to the OEM mirrors, but until then we need to spiff these guys up. The carbon fiber looks a little faded. That needs some polishing. All the bolts need to be repainted and this backing plate needs to be completely repainted. So those need to basically be completely redone. Our scoops, our uh, GT scoops, the vinyl wrap did not, did not live very long on these. So these need to come off and be repainted black. The vinyl wrap on that one is eh, decent. Coming over here, that's what happens when vinyl wrap isn't applied correctly and spends a year and a half out in the sun. Just totally toasted. So those need to be fixed as well. On the inside, things are pretty good, except for the headliner. The headliner is sagging. We're gonna need to repair that and go ahead and uh, pin that back up to the ceiling. I've got a crazy idea of how to do that. I'm not really sure. And other than that, unfortunately, this window was just a tad bit rolled down from like the last time I used it or something. And it got um, a little, little bit of uh, like moisture in here and uh, some other spots on the window. So it's a little bit more gunked up and molded up than it probably should be. So lots of just like, why is there red stuff in here? Lots of uh, mold repair, or not mold repair, but just mold removal, lots of like deep cleaning uh, is gonna need to be done. This is what happens obviously when you park a car outside for a year and a half. And uh, from now on, this car will live in here, inside, so yeah. Uh, another interesting thing, moving on back here, this spoiler, you can see what happened to the paint over the years, it just did the craziest stuff. Um, something went wrong with the clear coat. Something went really wrong with the clear coat. It looked good for a while, and then over the years, it just started like shrinking back and crinkling up and becoming this crazy rough, like, 
It's so bizarre. So I'm guessing that we either mixed the clear coat with like the wrong chemicals or some, something bad happened there with the clear coat and totally jacked it all up. So this spoiler's gotta come off. Everything's gotta be completely sanded off and it's gotta get recoated in black um, all, the, all the way from scratch. The rest of the stuff that we painted black, like this and like this, they look great. Um, we painted, yeah, we painted, no, this came black from factory, but we painted this and, and it looked fantastic. I don't know what happened here, but I do know it was different paint cycles. Like that was one time we did black. This is another time we did black. And um, we painted some other, this is loose. I'm gonna have to figure that out too. We painted some other stuff black um, when we did this and it was like, we didn't use hardener in the paint or something. So anyways, spoilers gotta be taken off and completely redone. Other than those things, which isn't too many things, this car is really, really a great car. It's super enjoyable to drive. The suspension is phenomenal. The ju just drivability of this car is phenomenal. The visibility isn't too bad. It's like, it's very similar to my 370Z. And uh, and it's just a great car. It gets great gas mileage. It's got a Toyota Camry engine, so you don't have to worry about it. I mean, all sorts of great things about this car that I could go on and on. Uh, but I really do love this car. And I love looking at this car. It's a phenomenal looking car. So. You know, we gotta give it what it deserves. It needs to be brought back to life. It needs to be polished up. It needs to be cleaned up. And uh, and that's what we're gonna do over these next few days. So, let's get started. Let's get down to work. Let's go ahead and start with something on the easier side. Let's remove the rear spoiler. Struggle getting the trunk open a little bit, but that's the life of an Evora owner. Their trunk popping solution is an absolute joke. So once I got that off though, once I got the trunk popped, getting the spoiler off was really easy. So it's off, it needs to just completely be 100% sanded down and refinished, and then this stuff can all be deep cleaned. In other news, Chelsea just called me and told me that somebody hit the M5, and that it's worse than when somebody hit the front of the M5 which is just, I mean, this is ridiculous. Now that, now that means that we're in four active insurance claims at the same time, which is ridiculous. But I, apparently the person left a note, but they wrote a number, and when Chelsea called the number, it wasn't their number, but Chelsea says there's a car parked right next to the M5 that looks like they did it. So I gotta go over to Chelsea's house right now. I'll bring you guys along. Man, oh man, how exciting. Got hit again. All right, so let's figure out what the hell happened here. Here's our BMW, oh yeah. Yeah, that bumper cover is toast. Damn, yeah, it looks like they hit it this way and it creased it in right here. That is not good. Maybe a busted parking sensor, maybe not. Damn, if they would've just hit it a little bit less, that totally would not have been such a big problem, but yep. That's a, that's a new bumper cover right there. Now this is the car that's parked right next to us. Some fresh white paint right there. Doesn't, I don't know man, if they were turning, if they were turning in though, that's like a really unlikely, if they're turning into their parking spot, that's a really, really unlikely spot. But damn, that's really fresh. Like, I don't know though. I think that that's I think that's kind of unlikely actually cuz it's a it's lower too. It's like that's on like the lower half of their bumper and like that would be I feel like that would connect down here more whereas this definitely connected like right here. Why does everybody have paint on their bumper? The truck over here's got paint on their bumper. This is more likely <laughs> more likely it. Oh man, what a cluster. All right, I got to go see what Chelsea has to say. So the person left a note, and I'm covering up the first three le first three numbers, so you guys don't know what the number is, but the last four they just gave up on writing, so you can't even tell what it is. It's like such a dick bag move. Uh, I measured both the cars in the parking lot, neither of them, the height does not line up with either of them, so I don't think it's either of those cars. So, a little bit more bad news, but we're not gonna let us bring us down. I got a strategy, I know how we're gonna deal with this. Chelsea? We're gonna instant karma this. Oh yeah. Instant karma. I lost the Corvette key. It's gone. Let's go to my house. We'll get in the FJ and it'll magically appear because karma. Oh. All right. 
This has to work, right? I searched everywhere for that key today. It's, n it's nowhere. It's so gone. So it's gotta be in the FJ. We have karma on our side. Let's get it. All right, FJ, it's time. Give me the goods. Show me where the key's at. 20 minutes later, and I've got bad news. It's not in here. I'm gonna check my house one more time. If I don't find it, I'm gonna declare myself a loser of keys. It is officially nowhere to be seen. Sorry we spent so much time today looking for the key. I just, I really thought we were gonna find it. But I, I believe now that we will find it like later on through the build once we've replaced it. Um, somebody wrote in the comments that I can just go to the dealership with uh, proof of ownership and the VIN number. So like take the title to the dealership and they'll just make me a new key. I hope it's that easy. That'd be fantastic. I expect the dealership has a replacement solution. So that's the route that I'm going to take and I'll, I'll check into that tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is normally the weekend days off that we take off, but we got a bonus episode coming out. It was something we filmed a while ago working on the FJ. Please tune in for that. It's pretty cool. We do some, uh, some spiffing up of the FJ that it definitely deserved. And uh, in the next episode, we're going to get back on the Evora. I definitely apologize about not getting more work done. It's kind of been a theme of the last few days, but, uh, you know, shit happens. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see. Oh, uh, San Francisco meet February 21st. We're, I, I apologize that we're taking the Evora down. Um, again, it's the last car that we took to San Francisco and we're taking it down again. But, um, on our way down to California, we wanted to stop and do a meet. So San Francisco is it guys, uh, email me good spot ideas. And I can't wait to meet y'all February 21st night of February 21st. We'll do a meet. It'll be a good time. February? Why did I say February so many times? I have no idea. June. Guys, June. Alright guys, that's it. I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Peace! <laughs>